Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. Today I'm gonna to share a little DIY with you. I have been working on redoing my patio or refreshing it more or less. And one of the things I wanted to do was add cushions to our outdoor chairs. And um, these chairs are like really inexpensive. I think I got them for around 10 or $15 a few years ago. Uh, and they're still in good shape, so I have no reason to replace them, but I did kind of want to change up the look and lighten up the patio overall and then add a little bit of cushion. You can buy cushions for these chairs, but number one, they're pretty expensive, and number two, they're almost always too wide for this type of chair. So we're going to DIY some. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what we are using for our materials today. So this is the fabric we're using. It is just an outdoor like white fabric. I'll try to like show you the weave. It's um, just kind of smooth feeling or whatever, but I got that from Joanne's Fabrics. I got four yards, one yard for each chair. I'll, I should have plenty extra because I will also make um, some ties to tie them on the chair with this. And then for the actual like cushion, I ended up getting this uh, queen size foam mattress topper. It's got the texture or whatever on one side, but I'm pretty sure the other side is flat. So I ended up getting that mattress cover or mattress topper because um, when I was shopping on Joann's, I was looking for like the chair cushions and they do sell those in squares, but for the like sizes, I couldn't find the right size that would fit the back half of my chair, like the part that your back leans against. And then also the bottom, like for the bottom cushion, they were, they were too wide. They weren't the right size. And then it was going to end up being pricey, um, no matter what, because I would have had to like somehow figure out how to do the back side and cut everything down. And I thought, you know what? I'm pretty sure I can get a mattress topper for very inexpensive and it will be big enough to do all four chairs and I can customize it to the size I need. So I picked that up from Walmart. It was $14 for a queen size. It's gonna hopefully work perfect. It should be a fairly simple tutorial. I am kind of making it up as I go because I've never done this before, but I have like a plan in my head. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully this helps you with your own thing if you are planning to do the same, so. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is obviously measure your chair. My advice, measure twice, cut once. So um, I measured a couple of times across the width and then I also took a measurement of the back, like where your back leans and then also the seat. And I ended up, I'm just gonna end up doing like a square for the bottom and then make a longer top for where your back sits. Um, next, I'm just gonna open up my mattress topper and I'm just wanting to measure out those measurements I just took. So for my specific chairs, I am doing an 18 inch by 18 inch square for the bottom and then an 18 inch by 22 inch rectangle that goes to the back part of the cushion. So I am just measuring all the way up my foam mattress and then taking a ruler and a box cutter to cut through just like halfway and then I'm going to cut the rest of the way through with scissors. You can do the whole thing with scissors and actually that's how I ended up cutting the rest of these because it's actually easier and this is not a very thick mattress cover but if you are using a thicker one because there are different um, thicknesses then you might have to do like scoring it with a box cutter first and then using scissors because it might be hard to get all the way through with scissors. Okay, so I have all the cushions cut. Uh, this worked out really, really good. There's like a little bit of leftover foam. But as you can see, these are considered like an inch thick. And it does have the flat bottom, which is awesome. These are going to be the chair backs and those are the chair seats. So this is 18 inches square and this is 18 inches by 22 inches for my particular chairs. I'm gonna talk with you real fast about how I'm cutting the fabric. So the fabric I got is, has got like a 58 inch width. And then I got four yards. So here's how I'm going to cut my fabric. The, this is like the 18 inch square seat. And this is the 18 by 22 inch rectangle back, right? The seat back now. 
eight, I obviously need 18 inches across here, but I need another half inch here because this is one inch thick. So there will be an extra half inch on the back piece of fabric and an extra half inch on the front piece of the fabric where it will meet in the middle right here. I have to do the same thing on these ends here where these meet. So I need an extra half inch to meet in the middle on this side of the cushion and an extra half inch for this cushion, if that makes sense. So there really needs to be an inch of extra fabric in between these two. So when it gets sewn, it will cover this, if that makes sense. I hope this does. Again, another half inch here and another half inch for this. So I have 18 inches across here. I need a half inch for each side, which is 19 inches. And then I need another half inch for the seam allowance. So I will do a 20 inch wide piece. And then I have 18 inches plus 22 inches, that's 40. I need a half inch for this side, a half inch for this side, that's 41. I need a half inch for this side of this cushion, a half inch for this side of the cushion, that's 42. And then I need a half inch seam allowance on each side, so 43 inches. I'm gonna end up cutting it probably 44 inches. Actually, I may not even measure the length. I might just do the width right here and then um, sew and like once it's all put together, like the cushion's stuffed in it, then I can cut off the excess fabric. It's gonna be the easiest way most likely, but that is how I'm calculating the size of my fabric. So hopefully you can do that for your own because I don't know if your chairs will be the same size as mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started cutting the fabric and then I'll talk about how exactly we're gonna make this. So like I said, for my particular chairs, I'm going to need 20 inch panels. So I'm just going to take and measure 20 inches all the way down the width of my fabric here. Um, so my panels will actually be like 56 inches by 20 inches. And I'm just doing it this way because it's the easiest. I don't know if that will be the easiest for your chairs or not, but as you'll see, like. I'm gonna make my ties from these pieces and everything. So I'm literally just going to cut eight pieces just like this. So I measured the first one and then I'm gonna lay the, the first one that I cut on top of the fabric and just cut, um, use that as a guide to cut and I'll do that until I get all my pieces cut. So basically what you're wanting is two panels per chair cushion. So for my example, I'm doing four chairs, four chair cushions, so I need two panels per chair, which is why I'm cutting eight of these panels. Next, I'm just cutting off the selvage edge of this um, fabric so that I can measure out the strips of fabric that we're gonna use for the ties. So I'm measuring out two inches, and then I'm gonna do another measurement of four, and this just gives me basically two two-inch strips. I have two fabric pieces laying on top of each other, so when I cut these, I will end up with four strips of fabric. Um, these are 18 inches long because that is uh, the width of my fabric. And then I'm gonna take these strips, fold them in half and pin them. And this is how I'm going to make my um, ties. You do not have to make these ties yourself. You can just use ribbon or string if that's easier, but this is what I did for mine. And I love the way it turned out. So. Um, you're just gonna run a straight stitch down the length of your strip of fabric, and then I'm gonna show you how I turn it inside out. What I do is I attach a safety pin kind of where the um, thread is, like where I sewed, cause that's like a stronger part since this is cut fabric. And then I'm gonna stuff my safety pin back into the fabric. I have a, a crochet needle that I'm just using to push the safety pin in just to kind of start it. And then I'm gonna put my crochet needle through the fabric um, up until I catch the safety pin with the hook of this needle. There are probably lots of other different ways to do this, but this is how I'm doing it. Um, crochet needles are pretty inexpensive if you need them for this project, but I'm sure there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, once I catch the safety pin, I'm just gonna gently pull with my crochet hook. Um, and then use my other hand to manipulate the fabric to turn inside out. 
Once the safety pin has come out, I'm just gonna use my hands for the rest of it. And as you can see, it's actually pretty easy to do. And basically you're just creating a tube of fabric. And once this is done, by the way, that's live, so that is how long it took me to do it. It's not um, very hard to do. Remove your safety pin, and then we are going to tuck the ends of the fabric in on themselves. It's easy with nails. You can use a hook or something to push them back down in. But once I get them kind of even, I'm gonna pin them in place and then I'm gonna sew them using a straight stitch across this just to clo close the tube off. I didn't say it before, but each chair cushion will get four ties. Two ties will go where the seat uh, meets the back and then two ties will go up at the top of the back to hold the chair cushion on the chair. So that is why we have four strips per like two panels, if that makes sense. So basically I'm showing you one cushion from start to finish. I am doing four total, but you will only see me make one chair cushion. Hopefully that's not too confusing. Okay, now that our ties are done, we are going to pin our two panels together. So you wanna do right side facing fabric or the right side of the fabric facing each other. This fabric doesn't really have a right side, which is kind of nice, but if you're doing patterned or whatever, pay attention to that. I'm just gonna pin all the way down the length of the fabric, and then for my particular cushions, I am pinning a tie at around 20 inches in between the two fabric panels. So as you can see here, it ends up on the right side of the fabric when it opens up. So you do want your tie in between your two pieces of fabric. Hopefully you can tell from the video what I mean, but um, do make sure to measure so that your ties are at the right spot on both sides of your fabric panels. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin all the way down the length of this, and then we are gonna run a straight stitch from uh, both of these sides um, the length of the fabric, um, basically just creating a large tube of fabric. Once you're done sewing, go ahead and turn your fabric right side out. So I'm just gonna reach my arm in here, turn it inside out or right side out. And then where the ties are from one to the other, you're gonna do a straight stitch across this on the top of the fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick some pins in it so I can make sure my line is straight. But basically you want to do a straight stitch from one tie straight across to the other tie. And this is just gonna create two pockets basically that you're going to fill with the um, foam mattress topper. Okay guys, here comes the fun part. We are gonna stuff the cushions. So I am taking my 18 by 18 inch chair pad and stuffing it on the short side of my fabric um, and I'm just gonna try to get it in there the best I can as evenly as I can pay attention to make sure that your um, flat side of your foam is on the same side with both 
of the cushions, if that makes sense. I found it easiest just to kind of fold the foam in half and then lay it out once it was stuffed in the cushion. Um, and then what you're gonna do is basically cut off the excess fabric um, and then tuck it under itself. I hope this is making sense and that uh, the video is showing you basically what I'm saying, but basically tuck the fabric into the um, cushion and then we're gonna pin along um, like the bottom of the cushion and we're gonna do a straight stitch that you will be able to see on the outside of the cushion. So this is how we're closing our um, cushions, if this makes sense. Um, on the bottom, you don't have to do anything but pin, but when we go over to the top, that is where you're going to add the other two ties. So I didn't mention it when I was um, pinning the other ties in, but the four ties we made are basically just getting folded in half and that creates the two sides of each tie, if that makes sense. So it was a 20 inch long um, fabric tie folded in half. You basically have two 10 inch ties. Um, so I went about an inch in on each side, pinned in the other ties, and then um, just went down the length and that is going to be the top of our cushion. So now that it's all pinned, we're gonna go ahead and run a straight stitch all the way down both ends of the cushion and this is the completed cushion. So this is the last step. Um, if it's easier for you, depending on your foam that you're using, like the height of it and how close you have your seams to the foam, a zipper presser foot might be a little bit easier. Um, for me, I didn't have to because the foam was pretty thin and, um, like it just didn't cause a problem. But if you find your foam causing a problem, switch to a zipper presser foot, it just might be a little bit easier. Otherwise, this is a pretty simple project. I hope that I explained it well enough for you. If you have any questions, leave them below. I will do my best to get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, this is a project that it was just kind of in my head. I didn't have a pattern for it or anything, so it's a little bit hard for me to explain, but hopefully the video helps and like you understand what I did. Um, and that it's helpful for you so that you can make your own. But this is the finished cushion. I'm just gonna get it tied on real fast and we'll do the final reveal. So that is it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel to see more videos from me. I post new content regularly and I would love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.